everyone, and welcome back to the Redbeard Outdoors podcast. I'm Jonathan, your host, and here at Redbeard Outdoors, I talk about faith, family, fitness, and the outdoors. On Tuesdays, we do gear reviews, so gear items that either I've used or I'm going to be testing out uh, and bringing to you guys with my own personal opinion and twist. I don't have any fancy camera set up, so I don't have all the cut scenes and everything. I just sit here and talk to you just like you're in front of me and uh, just like we're having a conversation. And if I recommend it, if I don't recommend it and why, and uh, so you can either spend or not spend your hard earned money on the items that, well, that you need. And I want you to know from me personally, what I think about these items and, uh, and why I may or may not recommend them. So today being Tuesday, we got the tinkering Tuesday. And then on Saturdays, we have the amazing conversations where I get to share a conversation I've had with guests uh, where we learn from them, get to hear from their own experiences, and just better our own lives based on learning from them or just enjoying a great conversation. Uh, that's why I call them conversations and not interviews, because I want you to enjoy it, to be as if you're sitting there with us. So with that being said, guys, uh, I want to invite you personally over to Redbridge Fit Crew. We've got an amazing group on Facebook, just personal community of people that want to get better every single day. Right now we're running Appetite April where we're just going through and sharing different things that we do to make things healthier in our day-to-day lives, little substitutes that we've made or even recipes that we want to share with each other. And uh, we just have a great community there, guys. So come and join us. And of course, uh, First Form Outdoors, I'd love to have you at the First Form Outdoors Facebook group. Again, if you're not in, if you're not on Facebook, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually... Uh, understand that 100%. And I'd love to have you in on our weekly calls. So shoot me an email or a message on Instagram. I'd love to get you in on our weekly calls, uh, whether it be Redbeard's Fit Crew, First Form Outdoors, or both. With that being said, guys, today I'm going to bring a site, an archery site to you that I've been using for the last little while. And I've absolutely loved. I loved it since I saw it uh, because it looks great. But now I've learned that it functions just as well as it looks. It's a great site. <clears throat> as you guys know, if you followed me at all, you know I love the the Dialed Arxos site. So the guys over there at Dialed are doing amazing work. Uh, I really, really enjoy that group of guys. They're always looking to better their equipment. They take feedback, they listen to it, they run with it, and they make the changes that are asked uh, from from people that have run the site. Or things, you know, they, they love providing education as well. I know for a fact that some of the guys over there will spend an extended amount of time trying to help people with their bow setups, with their sights. And there's more coming down the pipe for that. But for now, uh, I've got two options that I'm going to show you here. Uh, one of them being the pick rail. So if you have a bow that provides a Picatinny rail on the front, like the new PSE bows, uh, the Hoyt bows, and there may be other bows out there that provide the Picatinny rail. And then there's the other one, which is the dovetail option. So if you run a Matthews sight or a Matthews bow, <clears throat> excuse me, if you run a Matthews bow, it'll run right through the riser. If you just have a regular setup that doesn't have a Picatinny rail or the bridge lock from Matthews, then uh, you would mount it to the side of your bow, like I'll show you here in a second. But your sight will come in a box like this. All right, and it'll show you that dial. Of course, I went with the orange. And this one is for a new bow setup that I've got uh, coming for you guys that I'm really excited to bring to you. But let's get this box open here. It's always harder on camera for some reason. All right, so I love that little attention to detail there, a little dialed. It also gives you, you know, they have their lifetime warranty. It shows you a picture of the site there with the rail. <clears throat> the dovetail rail. So as you open this up, you see designed on purpose. I love that. Again, guys, attention to detail. All right. Now, as you open it up, you'll get your dovetail mount there for the side. Okay. With the two screws that you need and then the, the tension screw there as well. You'll get an extra sight tape roll um, wheel. Sorry. I'm, if I'm, saying the wrong words here, but the sight tape wheel that I'll talk to you about here in a little bit, you get those sight tapes. And then you get a little pull tab here. Let me 
pull the side out. Put the box over here. Man, doesn't that just look fantastic? Mm. Okay. Let's get this thing out of the foam. So they have a couple different options. Well, sorry, I take that back. They have a lot of options depending on what you're wanting to do with your site. Uh, so first and foremost, they have, you know, the different void. Well, I guess first and foremost, you pick which frame you want. So do you want the dovetail, which is this one right here, which I love that they kind of skeletonize it as much as possible by carving that out, not just having a solid slab of metal here, but they cut that out to get as much metal out as possible. So you pick the frame, either this one or the Picatinny, which I'll show you here in a little bit. You can decide what color void dial you want. I, of course, went with the orange. And you can pick, do you want your site tape on the inside or the outside, which even after, say, you, you order this and you want to maybe swap it out afterwards, you can totally do that. Uh, so if you want to switch it from the inside to the outside, it's 100% able to do that. I just prefer my site tapes on the inside. All right. You have your break here. Which you push in there. Let's see here. You've got your break that you can push in, and it won't allow you to move the site up or down. And then you push it back out. You've got a good amount of tension there, even without the brake being on, which is awesome. Again, you can pick your void color, your sight tape ring, and then you've got multiple different adjustments here, guys. Well, I guess the next the next feature here is that angled adjustment there, which you guys will notice right here. This isn't straight up and down. What that allows you to do is as as you go out to distance. As you dial your side in, let's see here. Yeah, as you dial your side in, the housing of the site actually gets closer to your bow. So that's a great feature in and of itself right there as well. You're able to do second and third axis adjustments on this as well. You're able to micro adjust your windage here. <clears throat> and then of course the mag itself right here. So I went with the 0 0.010 inches pins because I like that a little bit more precise and it's the three pin housing. Something else you guys will notice is the bubble is on the top, which will allow you to pick it up a little bit more on your peripheral vision here. On the top here, you've got good tension with the slide to allow in and out, allow light or no light. And then, like I said, oh, my hand's picking that, being picked up. There we go. That three pin option is my favorite. Now, they are three fixed pins, so your gap will be set. And you're able to put the amount of pins that you want if you just want the two pins, if you want three pins, however you want to do it, whichever one you want to use as your slider. But that those three pins will allow you to have a three pin gap. And uh, here at the bottom, uh, you're able to get a little bit more distance. Since the bubble is at the top, you're able to get more distance out of your sight here at the bottom as well. <clears throat> so the way that the this dovetail rail works, let me show you here. So you'll mount, for those of you that aren't familiar with dovetail sights, for those of you that are, this will be pretty redundant for you. But for those that aren't familiar with it, you'll take this mount and you put this on the side of your bow <clears throat> with that top piece there being your tension screw that will go in here and hold the sight in place whenever you decide where to put it. And then what you do is you'll feed the sight in if you want the sight way far out from your bow, because your bow is here where my hand is. Okay, so if you want it far out, you can put it far out. Or if you want it as close as that to your bow, you can do the same thing. 
So you can slide in and out. Again, if you have the bridge lock technology, this was designed around the Matthews bridge lock housing. So that fits perfectly into the Matthews housing there. Uh, and guys, it's just great design. You're able to pick the house, the frame color, the mag color, the void color, You're able to completely customize it. Again, they have a two pin option. I'm a three pin guy. So I want the three pins, but they do have that two pin option if that's something you're interested in. And they also have the 0.019, uh, which is pretty common among uh, hunting style site pins. I, again, just like the more precise of the 0 0.010. So there's that. That's the dovetail. I'm going to slide that in here just like that. Now, I was running the Picatinny on the Hoyt, and I love it, the way the Picatinny lines up. Now, I'm going to show you guys the Picatinny housing. Ignore, ignore the, the, the site here. We'll talk about that scope here in a minute. But there's the Picatinny housing. And it's just, guys, again, attention to detail here. The way it's offset is perfect. Um, you know, you got the, again, you've got the break here. Uh, you've got the dial that just lines up great. Great tension, even without the brake being on. Now, they call this a brake. They don't call this a hard stop or whatever you want to call it. They call that a brake. Now, that button is a brake because it basically will, you can override it if needed. So you've locked it down and then maybe you're in the heat of the moment and you forget to unlock it, then you can still override it if needed. Okay. Again, this is the black dial. So if you guys like the all black look, you can get that blacked out look. Um, that tension screw was great on the Hoyt. Uh, never had any issues with it on the pick rail, which is awesome. And then um, the one thing I want to talk to you guys about here. So again, this is the, let me slide the, the mount off of it. But these are your two options for, for what they're calling the frame of it. So you've got the, the pick rail and then you've got the dovetail here. So dovetail, pick rail, okay? Everything else is pretty much similar from here forward. Everything else is pretty much the same just a matter of how it's going to attach to your bow. Now this guys, what you'll see here is the ultra view pins. This is the ultra view UV three XL. And this site, I have yet to put it on a bow and mess around with it. That's why you haven't seen a review on it yet, guys. Uh, but the reason I'm showing this to you is because this little piece right here. So you can, if you run ultra views and you don't just have to have the UV three XL, if you have an XL site, definitely recommend getting this little piece right here, which if you order the dialed frame, the dialed Arxos frame with no mag, which the mag is the housing here with the pins in it. If you order just the frame itself, it comes with this little offset arm. And what that offset arm allows you to do is mount an ultra view site to it, which this if you like ultra views or you're currently running an ultra view and you're just looking for a different site frame to run, then dialed is the way to go. So even if you don't want the fixed pin mag system that dialed has, this ultra view is awesome and uh, can fit on the system like, like here. So that little piece right there that little offset arm. If you see here, there's no offset arm. It just attaches straight to that windage bracket. With the ultra view, if you run an ultra view, you'll want that little offset bracket. Okay. So just something to think about if you have an ultra view and you're looking for a different frame to put onto your, your bow, um, this would be the way to go. Definitely go with the dialed frame. I, again, I love the the quality, the attention to quality, the tension that is without the brake being on even. It'll hold itself in place. It doesn't just fall. Um, there's, there's micro adjustment on the windage. Um, and then on the elevation, you just adjust it here, up and down. You, you put it to where you need it to be. 
Um, guys, I honestly, I have yet to find anything that I don't like about my dialed Arxos site. So what I'd like to know from you guys, let me know down below. What's your experience with your dialed Arxos? If you have one, if you don't have one, what are your questions? What, what would you guys like to know? Uh, I've been running these for a while now and really, really enjoy them. Um, I, again, I love the guys behind the site. I love their vision for where this site is and where it's going to be going as far as their company goes. So pretty cool things coming down the line as well, as far as site tapes and uh, things along that uh, avenue. And I'm really excited to share with you guys. And as those things come out, I'll keep you guys updated. But, um, you know, what questions do you have? What, what do you guys want to know about either of these sites? The frame, the Picatinny versus the Dovetail, why you would run one or the other. Let me know. Be more than happy to chat with you guys down in the comments down below. Uh, again, I, I've hit on every single aspect of these sites that, that has really stood out to me. Um, again, I've really enjoyed them. I love taking it out to distance. Uh, the furthest I've gotten to shoot is out to 80 yards at this point. Um, and I'm looking to take it out even further. And I do love, again, the the distance that that angled rail allows me to gain. Uh, I haven't put a precise amount on it. Um, but it's it's at this point looking like 10 to 15 more yards that I'm able to get out of my site, which is insane. So if you guys have any questions, again, leave them in the comments down below. You got something out of this, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 1,000, which I'd be super stoked to hit that after this video. Uh, and then, of course, if you're listening to this, leave a, a review. That helps more than you know. It's free for you. And uh, if you're not listening to the podcast on audio version, definitely hop over to the podcast. It's on all major platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera. Love to see you over there. Come and join us at Redbeard's Fit Crew. Love to have you over there as well. And uh, just love archery, love fitness, love my family, love faith, gear reviews, et cetera, guys. So if you're into all that, follow me on all the places. I'll leave the links down below. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. And of course, get out. Live your life and love it.